for travelers that don't use their vehicle you know solely for overland exploration and big trips and and their vehicles spend a lot of their time as commuters or you know, everyday transport a, s a portable solar solution is often required and I've been looking at a number of them and this one I, I particularly like it's called Flexo Power why do I like it? well this is almost indestructible and it's it, it, it feels like a thick heavy vinyl and apparently it is you can drive over it that's what I've been told you know, so it, it's very, very robust. And the great part about it is that it's very light as well, considering the amount of current it can produce. These are 79 watts each. Yes, 79 at 19.2 volts. But at that kind of wattage, that kind of size, that's the equivalent of a size of a about a 200 watt panel so if I'm adding give or take 80 plus 80 I'm talking 160 so in terms of size they're not very efficient but packed up I mean look at this uh, let me see if I can get this right first time round um, I can pack this up like this and it goes up into this little, little this, this wallet so that's 80 watts I think that's I think that's really really cool. I really do like that. It comes with with proper um, high am amperage, high current protect uh, connectors. And okay, so the inefficiencies of flexible panels is a rigid panel. You can lean up to the sun, you can adjust it. With flexible cat panels, you can't really do that because well they're flexible, and so you really get oblique sun almost always so there is a an efficiency question with solid panels solid panels are always going to be more efficient than flexible panels but flexible panels don't break easily easy to carry especially if it's a, a temporary installation and uh, you do lose some current so these at the moment bright sunny day are delivering to our battery 6.2 amps now i had on my vehicle a 180 watt hit panel and the hit sony panel would deliver up typically on a day like this a little less than double that that was 180 so here we've got 80 plus 80 is and 60 is not much less is it that's the inefficiencies of flexible panels but the advantages for a temporary solution are fantastic this system also comes with the solar controller and here this particular one um, will show voltage and you can even wire up your fridge and your load and measure the load but we don't have that wired up on this system but that at the moment is showing 6.2 amps into our battery losses from solar panels are caused by many things most significant bad connections secondly length of cable so what we've done now is we've reduced the length of cable down to virtually zero and we reduced the number of connections from three to one and let's see what difference it's made and i think it's made a significant difference Ah, but now you're cheating. I oh, know, it's holding it up. You're holding it up as an angle. So it's slightly cooler. So now this helps us understand. Let's see if it makes an improvement. If it makes an improvement, it, significant. It, it will. Then it's it will more. firstly, it will firstly because we're now angling it towards the sun. Yeah. Whereas before on the ground, it's oblique. And we've added 0.8 of an amp. 0.9 of an amp. So it's almost a whole amp that we are getting purely by slanting it towards the sun and reducing cable and two connectors. Yeah. Can we lie this flat to see what, what hold it up, is. hold it up and make it flat so it's, so it's not oblique to the sun. And can you, I'll, I'll hold it like this. Have a look now. 3.6. Okay, so 
3.5 now. I think it's fair to say we're probably losing half an amp from the cables. Would you say it's a, it's a guess? Oh, definitely. I mean, the cables are playing a significant role in two connections, two Anderson plugs like this. Yeah. So every inch of cable is going to reduce the amount of current ending up in your battery. And every connector you have will do the same. And if you put in bad quality connectors, well, then it's going to be more than an amp. It's going to climb very rapidly. So if you're making up your own system, you want the best connectors you can find and a few as possible and short cables Great bit of cable. and quite thick cables too, especially if they're long. I am not sure how solar panel manufacturers come up with their ratings. These are 79 watts each, which means that that's how much in ideal situation they can deliver. Now to calculate that in amperage delivered to a battery assuming that the battery requires a charge and not is not too undercharged and will not accept a battery all things given what should that panel be producing so if i'm looking at a voltage of 12.6 volts that's the that's the voltage of a, of a healthy battery and i multiply that by the wattage of that um, the, of the the amperage the amperage so voltage times amp equal watts and at the moment Paul how many watts are we getting from one panel how many amps from one Three panel? Amps. That's well at 13 volts at, thir at 13 volts 13 times 3 equals 39 that's 39 watts so it's rated at 79 but it's only delivering 39 it's delivering 39 because it is not absolutely perpendicular to the sunlight all the given losses through the cables through the switching all of those things so when calculating your requirements you cannot take the wattage given on the packaging as what is actually going to be delivered and if i make a similar comparison between my own panel it's a 180 watt panel would typically on a day like this deliver 11 and a half amps on a nice sunny day so if i go 11.5 and i multiply that by the voltage of the battery healthy battery i'm getting 149 watts out of a 180 watt panel you see you also get losses so while you get more losses with a flexible panel you also use you, you, you get losses out of the big panels as well and the flexo power as a portable solution given quite high losses still great still really good